Alright scholars, thanks for tuning in. We're going to take a look at the back side of your acceleration handout. And the diagram you see there is of a ball moving down a ramp. So let's read the top part together. A ball accelerates 2 meters per second square down a ramp starting from rest. The diagram below shows the position every second after it was released. So this keyword here, every second, and there we go, every second. That means that here we have time zero, and here it is one second later. So if you had started a stopwatch when you released it, after one second it would be here. After rolling for two seconds it would be here. After rolling for three seconds, here. Four seconds, here. So we're going to complete the following table using the information about the ball. And then we're going to graph the data. So what do we know here? We know that the acceleration is two meters per second squared. So the ball is getting faster by two meters per second every second. So we can write this in for each of these boxes. It's going to be the same number the whole way through because the ball is experiencing a constant rate of acceleration. Most situations in the real world do not involve constant acceleration. Your car, for example. Your car generally accelerates faster at first, but as it gets going faster, closer to its top speed, its rate of acceleration, its rate of getting faster, slows down still getting faster but not getting faster as fast as at the beginning okay so let's take a look now at the instantaneous velocity at time equals zero we know that the instantaneous velocity is zero so we can say v equals zero here and we're going to write in the table here as well and after one second how fast is it going to be going Here's where you have to use your understanding of acceleration. It's been accelerating 2 meters per second per second. So in this one second interval, it will have gained 2 meters per second of speed. So at this location here, it's going to have a speed of 2 meters per second. At this location here, it's going to have a speed of 4 meters per second. And here, 6 meters per second and finally 8 meters per second. So it's getting faster by 2 meters per second every second. And we could write these numbers into our table as well here. 2 meters per second, 4 meters per second, 6, 8, and 10. How about the position of it? This is where it gets a little bit tricky. We know already that the distance that something travels, we're going to say it's displacement, is equal to its average speed times the time it's been traveling with that average speed. So we, we can say that it's starting off with a position of zero. So I'm going to say x equals zero to begin with at this location. So we'll call that zero. How far has it traveled after one second? Some students like to think they can just say two meters per second is its speed times one second that this location must be two meters. But that's not true because it only reached two meters per second at the very end. It started at zero. So we really need to know what is the average speed it had during this one second time interval. So I'm going to switch to a different color here. I'm going to switch to green. What was the average speed that it had during this first second? The average speed is going to be the average of 0 and 2. And so we can say that the average speed during that time was 1 meter per second. So going with an average speed of 1 meter per second for 1 second, we'll take it to a position of one meter. So here we have one meter. 
I'm going to switch to red to do the next time interval. What about from this time interval of one second to two seconds? What is the average speed of the ball during that during that time interval? So we have it started that time interval at two meters per second. It got faster by a stead, at a steady rate until it was going four meters per second at the end of that one second time interval. So the average speed during that time is the average of two and three and four, which is three meters per second. So how much distance did it gain during this time interval? It gained three meters because it was going three meters per second for one second. So here we can say plus three meters equals and that's going to give us a new position of four meters. Let's take a look at the next interval. We'll do this one in purple. The average speed during this time interval is the average of four meters per second and six meters per second. So five meters per second. So during this one second of time, the, um, the extra displacement that it gained was five meters per second times one second, um, which is five meters. So here we're going to say plus five meters equals, and now it will be at a position of um, four meters plus five meters is nine meters. And by the way, for completeness, we can go back and I can use green again to show that here it was at, at zero position and then it added one meter, and that's why it ended up at a position of one meter. Okay, so there's a little bit of displacement along here was one meters, displacement for the next part was three meters, displacement for the next part was five meters. All right, the final time interval we'll look at here, we'll do this one in orange. The average speed during this time was seven meters per second. So it gained an additional displacement of, of seven meters. So now we have plus seven meters equals, and we're going to see 16 meters for a new position. You might have noticed a pattern at this point. Let's see if I can highlight that pattern for you. We went from zero position to one meter to four meters to nine meters to 16 meters. What's special about these numbers? If you are recognizing that these are square numbers, then you're right. One, two squares is four, three squares is nine, four squares is 16. So just by the pattern recognition, we can see that the last one would be 25 meters. So, this leads to uh, equa an equation that's used to calculate the distance that something has traveled while it is accelerating at a constant rate. And here's how the equation looks. Displacement equals one half times rate of acceleration times the time accelerating for squared. And let's see if it works. So we'll take the case of um, when t equals zero. I'm oh, sorry, t equals one second. We would get one half times the acceleration, which was two meters per second squared, times 
one second square and we get one half times two times one because one squared is one and these units are actually going to to cancel out um, you'll see here that the second square on the bottom is going to cancel with this second which was squared and that leaves meters for our units here so this all equals one meter let's try for another time and see if it works so this one we got one meter and indeed we calculated the other way as one meter let's take a look at the case where time equals four seconds so the overall displacement is going to equal one half times the rate of acceleration is two meters per second square times four seconds squared so let's evaluate this one half times two is one half I mean is one well, well we'll break it down. One half times two times four squared which is sixteen. Remember that we have to do exponents before we multiply. So we get eight meters. No, sorry. Step back. We get one half times two is one times sixteen is sixteen meters. Which is consistent with what we had over here. I'm going to pause and continue in a second part of the video where we'll do the graphs and the example problems below. Okay, so tune in to the next.